Hello, people of the internet, and welcome to my CBR talk. It's kind of like a TED talk, but about much more important topics like pop culture science, MCU philosophy, and X-Men continuity paradoxes. Today's talk will cover a very simple and uncontroversial subject, time travel and Doctor Who. To start, let's take things all the way back to William Hartnell's first Doctor. In one of his finest outings, the Aztecs, he famously said, But you can't rewrite history! Not one line! If you haven't seen any of the first season of the show, then that kind of strict attitude might surprise you. This Doctor wasn't so much about the wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff as he was a cold, older man with little patience for nonsense. Something that was mine for a lot of humor in his meeting with the notoriously ridiculous Twelfth Doctor. It's a good thing he didn't see Twelve ride in on a tank while playing an electric guitar for the sake of a pun. It may have forced him into an early regeneration. While quite a lot about the first Doctor's era was changed or ignored by the 50-plus years of the show that followed, the first Doctor's rule about rewriting history has lived on. The New Who era episode Father's Day had companion Rose Tyler confront this problem in a very real way. She attempted to save her father, Jack, from a grisly fate against the Ninth Doctor's advice. Those consequences were… pretty terrifying. This brought about the coming of the Reapers, beings linked to time itself who looked like creepy bat monsters. They hunt down any paradoxes caused by changing fixed points in time. They were so brutal that Jack ended up sacrificing his own life to get rid of them. The Doctor has never really gone into what exactly a fixed point in time is specifically, but it seems to be a vital moment in galactic history. They're sort of like the load-bearing walls of the space-time continuum. In the context of this moment, that would seem to be the fact that Rose Tyler would go on to save everyone from the Daleks, Bad Wolf style. That likely would never have happened if Jack Tyler had lived. Therefore, the Reapers were sent in to fix the timeline so this could occur, and then never showed up again. That being said, the consequences for trying to change a fixed point in time can actually be a lot worse. One of the most impressive stories in New Who is the love story between Eleven and River Song. The two meet at different times in their respective timelines and refuse to give the other any information out of fear of breaking one of those precious fixed points, or spoilers. When the Eleventh Doctor's demise seemed imminent, though, River Song disagreed. She refused to shoot Eleven, prompting all of time itself to go crazy. All of human history suddenly occurred at the same time, threatening all of existence itself. River and Eleven ended the time continuum mayhem with a wedding that the Reapers apparently weren't invited to. River carried out the shot, which turned out to be a fake-out to make the galaxy think the Doctor was deceased. A ruse that really didn't last very long. If you want people to think you're out of the picture, Doc, maybe stop traveling all around space and time in your very noticeable blue police box. Perhaps the most tragic moment in the series concerning fixed points occurred in The Angels Take Manhattan. The final outing of Amy and Rory saw the Doctor forced to face the rules of time travel in a brutal new light. Once someone learns about a future event, apparently that becomes a fixed point in their own timeline. This kept the Doctor from rescuing Amy and Rory once he saw their tombstones, because he knew they perished in the past. There's actually a pretty great fan theory that the first half of that season tells the Doctor's story in reverse. That he loses Amy and Rory and then goes back to have more adventures with them, like the power of three and dinosaurs on a spaceship. And then he's able to move on during the Asylum of the Daleks, which introduces the Clara story. Go ahead and rewatch it. The theory totally tracks with the Doctor's weird emotional state all year. Especially that crazy cowboy stuff. So, the integrity of the timeline is clearly the most important rule in all of Doctor Who lore. It's one that's caused a ton of grief, heartbreak, and chaos for the Doctor and everyone they love. You know, except for all those times that the show openly breaks this rule or ignores it entirely. You can't change history. Not one line. That's the first Doctor's opinion. It definitely wasn't agreed upon by all of his successors. Apparently, you can scribble all over history and it doesn't matter all that much. The most recent example of this came in the Jodie Whittaker run, the era most maligned for canonical contradictions. Orphan 55 shows a vicious future for the human race in which the Earth is a barren wasteland populated by monsters, and also unsuspecting tourists because it's Doctor Who. This actually isn't the part that contradicts canon, sadly enough. 
there are multiple references to Earth's demise in the series. Thirteen explains to her shocked companions that this is only one of several possible futures, though. This means that all of humanity's futures that we've seen in the series aren't fixed points, but a series of possible futures that the Doctor cruises through. That really doesn't explain why previous Doctors were so fixated on specific moments of future human history, like the destruction of Bowie Base 1 in the waters of Mars, or the moon is an egg thing. Seriously, does anyone else remember that time 12 revealed that the moon was actually the egg of some giant alien space chicken? I've never been able to look at the moon the same way since. Most notably, A Christmas Carol treats this sacred rule with all the respect of a jump rope. In order to save Amy and Rory, Eleven jumps through a man named Sardik's history in order to pull a Charles Dickens. He makes him confront his own past, present, and future while changing all three over the course of an hour-long special. This also changes the trajectory of an entire planet. You think this would have some effect over at least one fixed point in time. Maybe the Reapers don't intervene if the spirit of Christmas is on the line. Few things in Doctor Who are as sacred as the spirit of Christmas. Perhaps the most famous reversal of this moment came in perhaps the most famous episode of the entire series. The episode Genesis of the Daleks features the fourth Doctor undertaking a mission to destroy those pesky Daleks once and for all by keeping them from existing in the first place. The Time Lords, aka experts on fixed points in time, give for this mission. Ultimately, he doesn't end up going through with it, but it seems like the consequences of doing it would have been worse than the Daleks themselves. Surely the history of the most feared race in the galaxy have more than a few thousand fixed points in time. If Jack Tyler getting hit by a car or River Song shooting a fake doctor causes Reapers and world-ending time disasters, you'd think the erasure of the Daleks would destroy everything. I mean, how would the fourth doctor even exist if the Daleks didn't? So much of his history was framed around his ultimate enemy that it seems impossible that his timeline would go the same way. This would then prevent the fourth from ever being there to stop the Daleks from being born, and, you know, the paradox, and ugh, I'm getting a headache. Of course, there is one explanation that the show uses any time one of those pesky human companions tries to bring up one of these paradoxes or contradictions. That explanation being that our puny human brains just can't possibly comprehend the Time Lord math necessary to come to grips with things like fixed points. I mean, I could barely comprehend 11th grade algebra, so I don't have a problem believing that that's true. I mean, it's not like the Time Lords break their own sacred rules, right? One of the biggest rules the Time Lords have is that they cannot intersect with their own timelines. If you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. If you're a time traveler who has like a dozen lives, things could get awkward pretty quickly. Especially if 90% of the places you visit are in the 20th and 21st century United Kingdom. This was a huge problem for Amy Pond when she got into some truly tragic time travel hijinks in The Girl Who Waited. Two Amys were created, one from the present and one who was stranded for decades. Both wanted to return to the TARDIS, but the Doctor could only allow one to survive. Apparently the paradox would have destroyed it or something. This is one of the Doctor's darker moments, but he did it for the greater good. Crossing your own timeline can only lead to disaster. Except for all the times they do it, and it works out totally fine. I mean, who doesn't love a Doctor crossover special? Ever since the first one with 1972's The Three Doctors, it has been a recurring bit of fun that the series has milked for decades. It's fun to see all the Doctors run into each other and argue over who's the best at doctoring. That said, it is kind of weird that there are no consequences for any of it. Even the fantastic special mini-episode Time Crash with the 10th and 5th Doctors breaks the rules. If older Amy couldn't hop on the TARDIS because it would destroy the ship, then why was it fine for 10 and 5 to merge their TARDISes together and interact? Also, why did he age, but the salary on his coat didn't? Was I the only one who was bothered by that? Yes? Okay, well, let's just move on. The biggest of these crossovers occurred in the 50th anniversary special, The Day of the Doctor. This had David Tennant and Matt Smith's Doctors meet in one of the greatest Doctor Who moments ever. It also had a scene where all 13 of the Doctors up to that point united their TARDISes to save Gallifrey. I don't know if they made some sort of one-time-only Doctor group chat or phone call, but all of them arrived. They crossed the time stream 13 times over and nothing bad happened. It gets even more complicated when you add in the timeless child aspect from the most recent season. This revealed that there were actually several Doctors before the first Doctor. So who knows how many there have been that didn't show up. I mean, I'm pretty sure they'll eventually retcon that plot twist because a lot of people hated it. But right now, it's a thing. 
Ultimately, the rules of time travel in Doctor Who will remain a mystery to us puny humans. Perhaps there truly are no rules, or the rules shift depending on the scenario. Time, like the Doctor, may constantly shift and change instead of remaining constant like we would like it to. That, or it's a British television show originally invented for children about a kooky time-traveling superhero that was never really meant to make sense. So that closes out this CBR talk on the intricate workings of Doctor Who. Join us later as I guide you through the genetics of how Fry from Futurama could be his own grandpa. Until then, treasured pop culture academics, feel free to leave us a comment, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more from CBR.